Patch notes have arrived and Necromancer is eating well this season. Not only that, there's quite some amazing changes to endgame loot item levels. Timestamps in the description below, check the part you would like to see. First, we get a new unique end aspect, and that is the Pain Gorger's Gauntlets. Damaging enemies with a cast non-basic skill marks them for 3 seconds. When a basic skill first hits a marked enemy, the basic skill's damage is echoed to all marked enemies, dealing 200% increased damage multiplicative. Sounds very good for Druid and Barbarian, I would say. Necro, not so much. Then the aspect of adaptability. When cast below 50% maximum resource, basic skills generate another three primary resource. That's huge. And when cast above 50% maximum resource, basic skills deal 80% increased damage. A basic skill maximum blasting Claw Druid could be happy about this, but usually they don't actually use spenders, so maybe more Barbarian. And lastly, Juggernaut aspect, defensive. In 0.75 to 1.25 armor, but your evade has 100% increased cooldown. Sounds good for a sorcerer that can teleport everywhere with very low cooldowns and just have like a maximum armor beefing without having to do much. Followed by two changes to uber uniques and the overpower alteration. First, the Ring of Starless Skies used to be a little bit useless because whenever you did a different cast of an ability, the, ability, the Ring of Starless Sky resource reduction reset. Now it says spending resource reduces your resource cost and increases your damage by 10% for three seconds. This is absolutely incredible and ultra S tier. Now I finally want the Ring of Starless Skies. And we have the Melted Heart of Celis that could make people undying. You get a little bit altered, still good. The core skill damage is now movement speed, which makes it just simply good to wear. All stats are increased to two times, and the damage while healthy is increased to three times the normal value. These are huge changes. And now the unique power doesn't make you undying anymore, because it says gain 60 maximum resource. Very good for Bone Spirit Necro, and we'll get to that later. 75% of incoming damage drains two resource for every 1% of your life you would have lost instead. It's only 75%, so 25% of damage will always bypass that. Still very good, but just not simply broken anymore. Might finally be viable for a Necro. The changes to overpower were less significant than I thought they would be. Overpower attacks now gain plus 1% damage, down from 2% damage per 1% of your base life you have in Fortify. So it's always 10,000 life, 10,000 Fortify, and then it was 2%, now that's 1%. And the same goes for your maximum life. Overpower attacks now gain plus 1% damage, down from plus 2 for 1% of your base life that you have in bonus life above your base life. So the, the plus 12,000 life you have on top of your 8,000 base life, for example, is now also halved. That's still good because overpower is still very overpowering and high damaging. And all in all, as a level build for Necro, should still work absolutely fantastic. Maybe in the late game, we have to do some tweaks and twerks to make up for this. Now, the most important thing, the Necromancer changes. Followed up by what did they do to loot Nightmare Dungeons and overall make the game more enjoyable. And that is huge. For the Necro changes, we have a big Bone Spirit fun incoming. First though, the Mutilator Plate. Plate sounds like chest item. I hope it's pens though. You are Bloodlands. And when Bloodlands would deal damage to you, because Bloodlands deals damage every three seconds to lands enemies. And we are Bloodlands now, right? It fortifies you for one to 2% of your maximum life and has a 5% chance to form a Blood Orb. Bloodlands deals 20% increased damage. So a flat damage multiplier with a 5% chance to just form a Blood Orb. That's not worth it at all, to be honest. Might be working way better than I think it does when you're actually spamming Bloodlands, but I do believe that it's still better to play the Bone Spirit chest piece. I'll explain why as we get to the other changes. Also, the Shattered Spirit aspect, offensive. Casting Bone Spirit also launches 18 Bone Splinters in all directions, dealing 200 to 400% multiplicative increased damage and generating six essence per enemy hit. Usually when you're playing Bone Spirit, you kind of want to stay far away from your enemy because of how the old aspects worked. Now, you want to dive right in the middle, have your Bone Storm running so you have a barrier, then you cast Bone Spirit, it explodes for millions of damage, yes, millions, casts Bone Splinters that instantly refill your essence so you could cast Bone Spirit for millions of damage straight away again. This might be a very fun nuking build, 
especially for the gauntlet. That's not all to Bone Spirit, though. Iron Maiden's damage is now increased from 0.2 to 0.3. They're trying to make Iron Maiden viable, and there's another change coming. Hard Iron Maiden has now a bonus damage increase as well, so all in all stronger. Still not worth it to be played yet. Corpse Explosion's lucky hit chance was reduced from 40 to 25%. That change makes absolutely no sense. Even with the 40%, it was working with Ixfeld's Corroded Signet. Reducing it to 25% seems a bit silly to me. But the base damage was increased by another 20% multiplicative. That's nice. The Blighted Corpse Explosion went down. Shadow damage over time weaker now, while the base damage at least is higher. So it's kind of like the same. Blind. Damage over time increased from 80 to 95%. That's great. I've been playing blind with summons, but also with my Infinity Mist anyways. That's a big boost. And then Sever in total gets a slight boost. The problem still is that Sever is just okay, even with all the bonuses and desecrated ground shenanigans. Not worth it yet. But Bone Spirit. Damage is increased to 4% per essence spend casting Bone Spirit up from 3%. Doesn't sound like much, but if we're casting with 100 essence, instead of doing 300% bonus damage, it's 400% bonus damage. That's a 100% bonus damage, or not just a simple 1% wine. Also, Dreadful Bone Spirit, which is the second skill point in Bone Spirit, restores 30% of your maximum essence instead of flat 30 essence. Now, what did I say about Bloodlands as well? So we can restore 30% of our maximum essence. And there's the Blood Artisan's Kuras, which after picking up five Blood Orbs, has a free Bone Spirit that now can restore 30% of your total essence. That's huge. Considering that there's a chance to play the Melted Heart of Selig now plus 60 bonus essence, things are getting quite juicy here right now. We could now also work with resource generation bonus because it says 30% of your maximum resource. If I now have resource generation plus 20% and plus 20% on my rings, that would then also hire this 30% of maximum essence, probably to a value of if you get 50 back and have another 40% bonus, you're getting 75 back instead. We're cooking. This is going to be interesting. And to close the loop, if you're now playing Bloodlands, creating Blood Orbs, using Blood Orbs, and then Blood Artisans Karas, it's quite fantastic. Acolytes decompose. Previous Junior Minions deal increased damage, and now every 1.5 seconds decompose makes enemies vulnerable. Beautiful, but who the hell uses decompose? With Initiates decompose now also giving you movement speed after done casting, same statement as before, and Dreadful Blood Mist used to fortify you. I mean, we all usually play the Blood Mist that makes corpses. Now you gain 10% critical strike chance for four seconds after Blood Mist ends. That's really intriguing for an Ixfeld Corroded Signet Blood Mist build because Ixfeld wants to have maximum lucky hit chance procs, but also maximum critical strike chance. So with a combination of Blood Mist and then Ixfeld and consistently exploding corpses and also getting bonus critical strike chance could be interesting. They're also trying to rework Bone Prison. It will take a lot to be useful. So now friendly players and minions can now freely pass through the Bone Prison walls, which is huge before you would screw yourself and your own minions and your friends. The functionality of Enhanced Bone Prison and Ghastly Bone Prison have been swapped. So enemies are now vulnerable and you get bonus essence is now the one point and the two point thing, but swapped around. Also, Dreadful Bone Prison. Instead of fortifying you now, Bone Prison could give you cooldown reduction. Reduce your active cooldowns by 0.5 seconds for each enemy trapped by Bone Prison up to three seconds. That's not a lot. It seems very cool, but considering that the Crepify is a permanent always when lucky hit cooldown reduction, whereas this is a one-time cast cooldown reduction, I mean, the Crepify can give me 10, 20 seconds if I hit the lucky hits, where this will give me a maximum of three seconds per cast and has itself a high cooldown. The passive Ossify Essence now displays the current bonus on the tooltip. That's a nice quality of life change. And now to the Book of Dead. Don't get too excited, still intriguing. When Golem finishes casting their active ability, they will first try to target a new close enemy before reverting to their previous target. I think that's meant to make him more tanky. Blood Golem and Iron Golem. Blood Golem and Iron Golem. Basic attacks leave now. Cool. And then the Bone Golem. Active ability now grants the Golem Thorns equal to 70% of your armor for the duration of the taunt. Oh, that's quite interesting, especially when I have 15,000, 13,000 armor and the golem gets 10,000 thorns. 
And the thorns get also hired by, well, the damage by your multipliers and everything. Intriguing. I mean, a little bit damage boost might make the golem almost worth it over just simply playing Corpse Tendril. Bone Mage upgrade now fortifies based on your maximum life instead of base life. Minimally cool. And the Skeleton Priest heals for 40%. This is not the minion rework we're looking for, not even remotely. Still, the Cult Leader Paragon node now also, instead of your minions deal 15% increased damage for each minion type you have active, which is useless, has your minions deal 10% increased damage for each 20 plus off attack speed bonus they have, which would tie in with a minion's key passive that gives them bonus attack speed, and then you give them bonus attack speed. So the plan would be to get up to an instant plus 80% bonus attack speed to have already like a 40% multiplier happening. Follow that up with the aspects. There is a way to definitely make your minions do more damage. But as long as your minions are not scaling harder with what you have or having more defense from what you have, the bonus healing and everything is not enough. It is nice, though, to have the golem be a bit more useful, especially for the leveling portion. So the golem might be finally something to actually play. Whereas I do not see the skeletons to be viable in endgame. But we'll see during the season. Maybe we can whoop something out for you summoner lovers. Rejoice though. We will definitely play in the first 35 levels with skeletons and golem while leveling. Now also the golem additional bonus change from 25 health to 25% damage. Okay, just making him even harder hitting. Now the aspect of swelling curse get changed. First, it was saying Bone Spirits increase damage based on distance traveled, which is useless. But Bone Spirits critical strike chance is increased by 15 to 25%. Your maximum essence is increased by 2 for each enemy hit for 15 seconds. Keep in mind, Bone Spirit does restore 30% max essence now. You get 2 more essence per enemy hit. We're hitting 10 enemies, 20 essence plus, bringing us up to 150 essence. If we then also have the resource generation on our rings, boom. One single Bone Spirit has the chance to truly restore up to 80, 90 essence with one single cast. So you go completely empty from 150, full up again, cooldown reduction from the Bone Spirit's own abilities. Bam, why nice. The torturous aspect that you would never play because it would say Iron Maiden has a chance to stun enemies. But Iron Maiden is now also a darkness skill and deals shadow damage. Enemies afflicted by your Iron Maiden have a 15 to 25% chance to be stunned. That means if someone deals damage to you, they take damage back. But that damage is now shadow damage. And that shadow damage they take back also increases with terror, gloom, and your shadow blight key passive is being stacked by Iron Maiden. And there's Iron Maiden plus Decrepify together super curse cast that would give another 50% multiplicative shadow damage. They're really trying to make this work. I still don't see it, but Torturous Aspect is a utility aspect. That means it could go on your boots. You, like, oh, on your chest. There, there could be something there. There could be a potential build brewing up. Potential S tier build. Rotting Aspect, that is for Decompose again. Now spawns corpses even likelier. And then the Hulking Aspect, chances to reduce Golem's active cooldown increase from 5 to 10%, still useless. And chance to spawn a corpse increase from 2.5 to 5%, still useless. If this would say 20 and 20%, or even 20 and 50%, then, then we could talk about this. But they, like, like this, it's completely useless, especially since the Golem's damage, the Golem's damage ability still scales with my damage. It doesn't scale scale with the golem's damage bonuses. <sighs> There's so much rework needed still. Regardless of that, this promises quite some intriguing builds, and I'll promise you three different level builds to come in the next couple days. What did they do to loot, though? We know Helltide is now every hour with a five-minute gap in between, and the Distilled Fear for the Beast of Ice now drops at least once every single Tier 30 dungeon. After that, there's an additional chance to drop a second one, and Tier 90 plus always grant three. You need nine in total to summon the Beast of Ice, so do three Tier 90s and you get this already, which is very good. Also, the Purified Signal reward for completing a Nightmare Dungeon will always grant now one Sigil higher. So if you do Tier 99, you always get a Tier 100 Dungeon like the Abba 12 Zier did, which is very good. That gets followed by World Boss caches, also including unique items now, and World Bosses not straight up dropping 925 power gear. That is changed so you don't just go to a World Boss and get the strongest weapon available. 
That being said, uh -huh, things are looking better now. Now, the item power ranges for unique bosses are getting interesting. For Gregoire, it was lowered and for Varshan too. So they're not dropping so high legendary items anymore. But the Beast of Ice now always drops from 900 to 925, which is cool. And also very high chance to get 925s from him too. Duriel is still the 925 spam. Here comes the big kicker though. <laughs> Monsters at level 125 now have a 910 to 925 item power drop chance. 125 should be Nightmare Dungeon 81, 82 and above. Also, all monsters above level 144, that's Nightmare Dungeon tier 90 plus, now are guaranteed to drop 925 item power gear. The goal is with level 82, 83, 84, latest probably, to be able to do 90 plus dungeons. If we hit those 90 plus dungeons, guaranteed to drop 925 item power. You do not have to farm Duriel like a crazy monkey man anymore. You can finally pick up every single piece of gear again in Nightmare. I cannot stress how important this is. Finally, we can pick up gear again and it's fun. Like I can sift through the gear. Yes, the affixes will still be shit, but at least the 20 items I pick up are all 925 item power and all could potentially be good. It's still gonna be frustrating, but I'm at least not running through dungeons anymore and don't give a flying fart about a single item, which is the most hurtful thing ever because I kinda want to drop 925 gear and have fun looting the items. Now these changes already have my mind spinning and I can see some potentially new S tier end game builds that could be incredibly fun, especially with the companion and resource generation from him. Really, Bone Spirit seems to be becoming my new S tier build idea instead of Blood Surge. I'm not giving up on the Blood Surge or the overpower changes, especially because it's still going to be incredible for leveling. Now, if you don't know how the season mechanic works, everything explained plus a new level guide. 